All right, welcome back to a completely different show. We changed spots. We're changing format. We're changing everything. We're still giving out our favorite picks, our favorite entries, our favorite bets, but it's a little different this time. We're going to go right into our prize pick squares, and then we're just going to give you three games that we like, three games each. I'm going to give you three games I like. Tony's going to give you three games he likes, and that's it. No over, no under mandatory, no draft. Just keeping it simple, we baby. We suck at this drafting format, so we're trashing it. Yeah, honestly, he, that's what it came down to is it's – it wasn't fun. We it can't call fun. it the best bet show when all our bets stink. I went 0-5 oh last week. <laughs> I went Didn't hit four. a single fucking leg. Like three weeks in a row. Consistency sometimes is key, but not here. Exactly. Not now. All right. Right into it. Prize picks. Promo code BDG. You already know. Here's the deal. I got a two square for you. It's Jacoby Brissett. Less than 215 and a half passing yards. I'm going less than because the last three games, QBs against the Ravens, listen to this. Josh Allen, 213 passing yards. Joe Burrow, 217 passing yards. Daniel Jones, 173 passing yards. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, two substantially good quarterbacks. Jacoby Brissett is not at their level, and this is the line where they were at. So you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm going less than. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Brissett ain't him. And I'm pairing this with Devontae Adams, more than 80 and a half receiving yards. He's playing against the Texans. It's simple. Here's some wide receiver numbers against the Texans this season. Just last week, Marvin Jones went for 104 yards. Marvin Jones, everybody. This is Devontae Adams. Marvin Jones went for 104 yards. Mike Williams, 120 yards. Cortland Sutton, 122 yards. Michael Pittman, 121 yards. So... You get the idea here, right? Devonta Adams is better than all of these guys, and he should easily go for more than 80 and a half receiving yards. Probably more than 100. I like it. That's, so that's my two square. You got a little two square action. Give Obviously got a power play. I also got a two square play. I'm taking the more of Kenneth Walker rush yards against the Los Angeles Chargers. It's set at 65 and a half. Look, ever since Kenneth Walker became the lead dog in this backfield and Rashad Penny went down, he's been Beaston, he's been breaking off long runs against New Orleans, 88 yards. Against Arizona, 97 yards. Chargers ain't stopping shit on the ground. For sure, not stopping Kenneth Walker. Can I tie into this for you? I, I got Kenneth Walker on mine. I got like some stats for you. All right, yeah, hit me with them stats because I didn't do no homework. Running backs versus the Chargers this season, who Kenneth Walker is playing this week. Clyde edwards Slayer, 74 rushing yards. That's more. James Robinson, 100 rushing yards. Way more. Damian Pierce, 131 rushing yards. Even more. Nick Chubb, 134 rushing yards. And That's shitty Nick ass, bum ass, Latavius Murray, 66 rushing yards. Damn, even Murray clipped this number. Yeah. We really think that Kenneth Walker is not going to hit the more? I'm all over the more. I have it. I think we have the exact same square. I paired mine with Ezekiel Elliott. Yes. Yeah, you did the same thing. Yeah, I'll, same give you, I'll give you the same numbers for the running backs if you want. Yeah, fuck I it. I didn't do it. Ezekiel Elliott is playing the Lions this week. The Lions set at 65 and a half. Yep. Here's some running back numbers versus the Lions this season. That You know, substantial running backs. Dalvin <laughs> Cook, 96 rushing yards. More. Rashad Penny, 151 rushing yards. Rest in peace. Ramondre Steven season, 161 rushing yards. Go. So who's to say Zeke shouldn't be able to nail this, especially with a Dak that they want to probably, you know, yeah. ease him back. Right, exactly. We want to keep him safe. Against Philly, Ezekiel Elliott, 81 rush yards. Philly's a way better defense than the Lions. The Lions aren't going to stop anything. LA, 78 yards. So he's been able to clip this number his past two weeks. Lions are just so bad defensively. I mean, it's an automatic over anytime you have a line against the Lion. So that's my favorite two square play. That was, you had that exact We had the thing? exact same one. Okay. Yeah, we, we didn't plan that. It just worked out that way, but that right. could be great. So I'm going to give another one yeah, then. You because you, one. You, I have nothing else to tailed, say now. All right. You kind of tailed me on that one. I'm, I'm, Even though you came with the stats and came with the heat, I'm saying that you copied me. Yes. Because that's going to make me feel better. All right. Hayden Hurst. Let's talk about the tight end. In Cincinnati, going up against the Atlanta Falcons. This is a big total. A lot of points should be scored. Atlanta's offense has been able to keep pace with the best of them. Cincinnati, their offense is a little wishy-washy, all right? But this is a low total set at six fantasy points for Hayden Hurst. He clipped this number against Baltimore, which was another revenge game. They force-fed him, especially in the red zone, and they're going to do that shit again, all right? I love Hayden Hurst, six fantasy points. It's just, it's too low of a number. I have nothing against it. You're going to ride with me with it? I might. All right. I just might. Well, you know what you should pair that with? Another tight end, 
who's having a breakout season this year, David Njoku. You played his more last week, and that, did that cash? I believe it was one of the only uh, squares of my entry that did. Nice. Because David Njoku's hot, and I'm going to ride the hot hen- hand with him. Nine fantasy points is his line this week against the Baltimore Ravens. It, it just comes down to he's been crushing it, all right? He's a necessity for this offense. Look, we don't expect Jacoby Brissett to have a good game, but it really takes one catch from Njoku. Either he finds the end zone or he gets his usual four to five catches, and this line is going to get slammed. So those two tight ends, Hayden Hurst, David Njoku, more on their fantasy score. I love it. Lock it up. All right, I love that. So those are all our prize picks uh, plays for this week. Make sure you use promo code BG. First time depositors, 100% deposit match up to $100. Let's move on to our best bets for the weekend. Why don't you just give us, give us one of your bets to start? All right, this is my... Favorite bet of the week. It is an absolute lock. There is no chance it is going to flop. This is automatic cash. It is the Kansas City Chiefs minus two and a half in San Francisco against the 49ers. Look, I love the 49ers, but they are simply punching out of their weight class in this one. That's your team. That's my, those are my dogs, and we are going to get fucked up this weekend, all right? It, no one can stop Patrick Mahomes. There is no defense, even as good as the Niners have been. Uh, they're dealing with some injuries. They're not going to be able to stop Patrick Mahomes. It doesn't matter if there's 10 seconds left on the clock and you're up by seven and a half. Patrick Mahomes is going to figure out a way to score that touchdown, get the two-point conversion, get the dub. It don't matter. I just don't believe in the Niners' offense. It's been a little inconsistent. I don't like Jimmy G. He, he's like a serviceable quarterback, but in this race, 49ers about to get paced two and a half points simply is not enough you agree like this this feels like an this feels like an absolute lock yeah I, I the one thing with the Chiefs is they never they always find a way to not cover even in the games they win but two and a half seems kind of like they have to cover right. if they're gonna win right I mean they normally don't cover because they're laying like nine to ten points against you know against teams so that makes a little more sense why they wouldn't historically be a good cover team but here this is this might as well be a fucking pick. I'm like, Chiefs by three? That's easy. That's my favorite bet on the board. I'm hammering it. All right, yeah. I mean, I think it's a good bet. I, um, I'm i going to give you my first bet of the weekend. I love the Tennessee Titans, minus two and a half. They're at home. Here's a little stat for you. Mike Vrabel is 4-0 coming off the bye. And if you consider, if you count the Thursday night football game extended, you know, it's not a bye, but you know, games after Thursday night football, it's extended like a bye time. And a half. He is 8-0. So when you give Mike Vrabel time to prepare, he gets his fucking team ready, and they come out there, and they they beat the shit out of the other team. And the Colts are a team that they've notoriously dominated, uh, division rival at home. They beat them already this year. Uh, now they're going to play them again fresh with a banged-up Jonathan Taylor. I just I just see this is a, as an easy win for the Titans here, minus 2.5. Uh, it's simple, all the cliches, everything. I love it. I think this is going to be a harder matchup than you think. I actually have I actually have a bet. In place, Colts money line, Colts plus two and a half. Give me however you want it. Look, Colts dropped the first game of this two game series. They are not dropping another one. I don't care how long Vrabel's had to prepare. Colts know this team well. Their offense turned up last week. They're turning a corner. I swear to God, I wasn't wrong on Matt Ryan. I was just early. I was like five weeks early on Matt Ryan. This is where we see vintage Matt Ryan. This is where Frank Reich, his offensive genius mind, comes into play. Vrabel is a fraud. That offense, it ain't going to hold up. I don't believe in the Titans. Never have. I'm not going to say never will. I was going to say never will, but that's obviously a little aggressive in a statement. But give me Colts plus two and a half. I like the other side. Interesting. I didn't think you were going to do that. All right. I'm going to go with something that I I didn't plan on doing, but... Just looking at it, I need to do it now. Tampa Bay Buccaneers minus 10 and a half against the Carolina Panthers. Uh, it's just Tom Brady. It's either I'm, I don't believe in Tom Brady anymore or I still do. And like I'm going to convince myself that I still do. Tom Brady off a terrible, terrible loss against the Steelers. It's been a theme of Tom Brady. If he has something bad happen, a loss, he always comes out like ready to go. Like He's going to come out firing. And who else other than the Panthers? What a team to just light up. They're right? such a star. A division rival. Right a brutal loss against the Steelers last week. There's absolutely no chance Tom Brady has a close game. It was it was Buccaneers last week minus eight and a half against the Steelers was the lock of the century. Minus ten and a half against the Panthers was the lock of the century. You said something earlier. You weren't wrong. You were early. Well, guess what? Everyone who bet the Bucks last week, you weren't wrong. You were just early. Well, all right. You were, you were wrong last week. Yeah. But you can make it up this That's week. That's true. 
I'm sorry. You were you were wrong last week, but you can be right this week. Minus yes. ten and a half bucks against the Panthers. Right. It's not <laughs> insanity to go back to the Bucks laying this massive points. I mean, the Rams were ten point favorites against the Panthers last week. I think Bucks are a little more situated, a little more. Uh, how would you put it? They're they're a little it's, more it's, functional right it's now. Buck than or the Rams. bust at this point. You got a buck or bust. Right. Buck up or bust up. Right. PJ Walker. Definitely not that guy. Not that guy. And he's if Sam Darnold comes out there, he's not that guy either. So hell no. All right, I'm gonna go with an over here. I got a got a couple overs that I like. First one: the Atlanta Falcons and the Cincinnati Bengals. Total is at 47 and a half. These are just two great offenses. Just two good offenses squaring up, bloody knuckling, fist fighting each other. Bloody knuckles was my favorite game in high school, middle school. You, you feel like a Bloody Knuckles guy. Did you play Bloody Knuckles? No. I'm, I'm With the quarter? You take, you, they no, take I'm, the quarter I'm, and you... Did you guys play Bloody Knuckles? You put your knuckles down on the table and your buddy would have a quarter and you fling it at your knuckles and if you would, you know, break skin and you bleed and if blood hit the table, that's how you lose. That's so weird. You didn't play that? You weren't no. tough enough. You know, you're a Cali guy. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. continue. I just wanted to let everyone know I'm a tough Jersey guy. Yeah, you feel good about yourself? This trap. <laughs> <laughs> you see this trap dog? This shirt can't handle these traps. All right, both these teams, I like them on offense, don't like them on defense. I think the Falcons, being the cover team that they are, is going to keep this one competitive. They're going to be able to score, so it's going to be a lot of back and forth. Falcons also coming off a good win. They might be feeling themselves a little bit. They might be feeling a little sexy, feeling a little hot. Yeah, 47 and a half, not high enough. Give me the over. All right, interesting. I um I had an over I was going to take. I'm pivoting. I'm not going to do that. Doing a lot of pivoting uh, in the show. My last pick for the weekend. I hate to do it. I normally never do this. I really don't. I'm not a homer guy. I don't ever take my own team. I don't like doing it. But the Denver Broncos minus one at home against the New York Jets. Everyone thinks the Jets are a, 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 like a good team now. And they are. They're a solid team. They're, you know. But here's the deal. The Broncos defense has been playing so well. Everyone forgets about it just because the offense has been absolutely terrible and all the Russell Wilson commercials are coming out and making us look like a complete joke of a franchise and our locker room has no respect for our quarterback and our coach is a complete idiot and fire hack it should be trending everywhere and it's not. Um, but, we're you know, that's another story. Here's the deal. Broncos at home, anytime... You have to come into mile high. It's not an easy game. And our defense is just not going to make this easy for Zach Wilson. I think it's going to be a super low scoring game. And I so think, low uh, scoring. Uh, if anything, this could be the game where the Broncos actually get their offense going because maybe Russ doesn't play the whole game and we let Brett Rippon come in and we have hashtag let Brett Rip start. And that's all I have to say. Broncos minus one. It's not a homer pick. I just really believe in our defense at home. And it's going to be a tough, tough environment for Zach Wilson to play in. Yeah, that's the side I like. Um, I, I think Jets might struggle to put up any points this game. It's going to be tough. Broncos, obviously, their offense has not been clicking. So under of 38, very low total. But I think I'm flirting with also going under that. Broncos under, I think, is the side you want to be on for this game. All right, with my last pick, I'm going to go with another over. This time, give me the Texans in Las Vegas against the Raiders, 45 and a half. Not high enough, all right? The Raiders, every single week, have been in absolute shootouts because Derek Carr, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, that's a nice trio. You're going to get a lot of points out of them. And their defense ain't going to do them any favors, all right? Even the Davis Mills led offense is going to find success driving up and down the field. Damian Pierce should have a big game. Again, kind of like the Bengals-Falcons. Just two good offenses with kind of below-average, shabby defenses trying to hold up. Both of these teams are coming off a bye. Both coming off a bye. Fresh. So either going to be sluggish or super prepared. Right. Which right. you're hoping uh, for, super prepared. I, I kind of feel like they're going to be rusty, but... You wish I didn't tell you that right now. Yeah, I mean, I knew it, but I just <laughs> didn't, want, I didn't want that to play in. Yeah, hey, maybe it won't. Maybe. Maybe I just said it to say it. Yeah. Maybe it won't actually They're healthy. Matter. At the very least, they should both be healthy teams. Yes. Hopefully, um, these picks were healthy. Hopefully, we uh, we can turn it around. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the new uh, format. You know, a little quicker, maybe. And uh, just uh, better picks all around. I'm feeling a lot better today because, you know, I... I I like to just pick pick the games. I don't want to pick an over and an under and a favorite and an underdog and a flex. It forces you to pick a lot of games that you're not actually confident in. Exactly. That you wouldn't actually bet on. It makes no sense. Look, I, and also, if none of these games hit, I take it all back. It doesn't matter. So, <laughs> uh, See you next week. Thanks for watching. 
Uh, please like, please subscribe, or uh, also drop some of your favorite picks uh, in the comments below. I'd like to see what you guys are taking. Uh, any last words? Nope. All right. Let's get out of here. No words. <laughs>